again and welcome back to the Hobby King New York studio. My name is Matt and today I've got another FPV 123 episode for you talking about antennas. Now antennas are obviously a very big issue in FPV. What I'm going to be talking about today is all going to be about 5.8 gigahertz because other than like a little bit of long range uh, FPV experimentation out in California with my buddy Gabe, I haven't really done anything except in the 5.8 gigahertz range. The main reason for that being that here in the States, 5.8 is kind of the most open and free range that you can use and uh, kind of keeps you out of interfering with other folks in any weird ways. Now, in order to be fully legally compliant, I know at least in Europe, uh, most of the EU and here in the States as well, you're technically supposed to be running a 25 milliwatt FPV transmitter. Now that's not a whole lot of power. And as a result, these sort of traditional dipole antennas that come with all of your gear that are sort of the stock antennas, really aren't very good. They'll be okay for some basic range if you're just gonna do kind of what would otherwise be line of sight flying around your field, uh, or you're gonna stay pretty close. These work okay, but they do have kind of more dropouts. You get color inconsistencies and stuff in your video feed and cause issues. Now along the way, some clever folks uh, have engineered some better solutions to improve the signal clarity and the separation that you get despite using low power. Uh, kind of what I was talking about with the 25 milliwatt thing, Originally, you know, t this is all TV broadcast stuff. This is the, the stuff we used to do to broadcast over the air TV. Those stations had massive power. They might've been 10,000 watts or more to broadcast their video. And so as a result, your antenna structure and stuff wasn't that big a deal. Obviously that big antenna that was on the roof of your house for picking up the TV, uh, that was a specific design, but it was designed to pick up these broad, powerful signals. When we moved down to these micro power signals, we started to have some issues with objects in the way or ghosting like inside where you've got signals bouncing around. That's where these guys come in. These were invented. These are called circular polarized antennas. And these provide a different field of reception for the signal that is much, much stronger and much more robust than you get from a standard dipole antenna. That's why you want a set of these. Now, the first of these, you pretty much had to go online and download plans and figure out how to make them yourself. And you would bend up some wire and solder to make these specific lobes and create these antennas. And then you could test them with an oscilloscope and make sure that everything was working the way it should and go on to use them. They were super cool. I have some friends that made sets of these themselves. They worked really, really well. And along the way, some of the guys like Anthony over at Immersion RC and some of the other folks started catching on that if they made these for us, we would buy them and they would be great. The first of these that you saw kind of in the aftermarket were like this Boscam set here. They were RX and TX specific. That's why these are labeled on the top. This guy says RX on them. That was because originally you had three and four pole antennas that were tuned either to be receiving or transmitting. The guys, throw those around. The guys at Fat Shark came along and did a bit of thinking, did a bit of re-engineering of their own, and they came up with these guys. These, if you look on the bottom, you can kind of see that there's four lobes there. These are four lobe antennas for both transmitting and receiving, uh, and they work really, really well. These are right-hand polarized, circular polarized antennas. So I pulled this off our Alex's quad, sorry buddy, to show you real quick. If you look in the bottom here, these are both right-hand circular polarized 5.0 gigahertz antennas. But if you look on the inside here, one of these is SMA, which is an Audi pin, and one of these is RP SMA, which is an innie pin on the inside there. And that's very important because your different pieces of equipment are gonna have one of those connectors or the other. And if that central pin isn't engaged, that's the actual signal pin. So you're not gonna have much in the way of a signal from your antenna. Now, the reason to use these is, as I stated before, because on that low power, antennas are everything. If you have that low power signal with one of these antennas, you can actually go much, much, much further than you can with one of these guys. Uh, now let's say, for giggles, you wanna try and go even further, and you've got your uh, 5.8 gigahertz system, and you really wanna make sure everything's really, really solid, or maybe like Alex here, you're rocking a set of diversity goggles with two separate receivers, or, <clears throat> like my stuff over here, you might have a diversity ground station receiver like this one, where normally I run a circular polarized antenna like this one, and instead of a single dipole antenna, I actually run something that looks like this guy. This is a patch antenna. This thing is an even longer range, but much more narrowly focused and specific lens, or sorry, specific antenna than this one. So 
with this system set up like that, I have the best of both worlds. I have auto switching between the two signals, between my high resolution long or uh, you know omnidirectional antenna here and my longer range patch antenna here. That's pretty much it. So in any frequency that you choose, whether it's 5.8 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz, which you don't want to do because it interferes with the radio, or 900 megahertz, which gives you really long range and is pretty open here in the States, or even 433, which requires a ham radio license to transmit on. Any of those things, they all have the same kinds of antennas. The thing that tends to happen is as you go to those lower frequencies, the antennas get bigger and bigger, but they're still the same styles. Uh, long story short, guys, if you're out there and you're flying 5.8 gigahertz basic FPV like Alice and I do all the time, you really, really want to get a set of these or even these little guys, basic inexpensive circular polarized antennas. They will greatly improve your range, greatly improve your success when you're flying. So guys, here we are outside of the office to try and demonstrate the range of these antennas I've been talking about. Now, Alex and uh, James here have both been flying a whole bunch and they're getting really quite good at it. So we've got their two copters here. We've got James's Eli Fanning and Alex's Rotorbits Illuminati creation over there. The two of them all set and antennaed up, one with dipoles and one with the circular polarized antennas. I've got a monitor set up over here. I've mounted a receiver on the top of the pole for the ground station and I pulled the antenna off, kind of like you would have done back in the day for a 72 megahertz range check. By removing the antenna on that receiver, I've artificially shortened the range and I'm hoping if this works the way it should, that when these guys fly away from me, we can kind of show you the difference in range you can achieve with a dipole or a circular polarized antenna. We're not going to bother showing you the patch because even without an antenna on the receiver, the patch distance would be super, super far. Let's try it out. See how it goes. Uh, Alex, hit it. So as you can see, already losing some signal, occasional breakup, and we're gone. Turn it back around, Alex, because nose in, you won't get the same range you will nose out, but shouldn't matter. Oh, I was doing it for the camera show. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's all right. Because yeah, you may come right back. Yeah, you did. Now fly away. Keep going. And you're breaking up and gone. Told you to be about that tire. <laughs> so guys, there you have the, the circular polarized antennas. We're gonna leave Alex's copter sitting out there where he lost signal. By the way, you'll notice when he was turned in nose in, his signal actually went away a bit sooner and I had him turn back around. That's another reason why those circular polarized will help you actually get less of that effect. Uh, we're gonna leave his copter where it is. James is gonna set up Eli Fanning here. He's gonna fly him out there. We're gonna see how far he gets. And hopefully it'll be a pretty obvious difference there that you guys can clearly see why the circular polarized are so much better. Going. Gone. Gone already. Gone. So there you have it, guys. Like, not even half the distance there out of Eli. You can see on our monitor there that his signal came back a bit when he landed on the ground, but it was completely gone for quite a while while he was flying and certainly would have led to a crash. I don't know how much more clearly we can illustrate the difference than that right there. About double the distance out of the circular polarized antennas. Didn't even get into the fact that if we were flying around in these trees and all of that, the circular polarized antennas are way better with that kind of broken interference. Guys, for the very, very small investment in a set of antennas, you can way improve your FPV experience. I highly recommend it. Be back with more tips real soon.